and welcome to Dapper Drams, where we taste and review whiskey to try to determine if the dram in our glass is indeed a Dapper Dram. Well, we're here today at the Ambassador Bridge because I wanted to talk a little bit about international travel and duty-free alcohol. Airports and border crossings all across the world are home to duty-free shops, where international travelers can pick up certain items that are free from the import taxes that are imposed by the state or country that they are leaving. So some items like tobacco products, perfumes, jewelries, candies, and alcohol can be found for a discounted price. When it comes to alcohol, spirits are most often found in one liter bottles, which pretty much adds to the discount that you're already getting. The catch is that you have to be actually leaving said country. You can't just walk in off the street and start shopping. When it comes to duty-free whiskey, you often get what is known as the travel retail exclusive bottling. Sometimes distilleries will want to test out a new recipe or batch, uh, be it new age statements, finishing types, cask treatments, um, and they don't know how it's going to be received by the general public so they will release it to travel retail. If it does exceedingly well, they'll mark that expression for global release. If it doesn't do too well, well, they'll probably just discontinue it or keep it in travel retail, hoping that they can get rid of the stock they have. Occasionally, you get an exceptional bottle, which becomes highly sought after and usually runs out pretty quickly and doesn't make its way back onto shelves. In my experience, most of the time, travel retail bottles are kind of a way for distilleries to get rid of undesirable casks. They may have some casks that just aren't performing well, whatever their contents are, doesn't really fit their profile. So they will bottle it for retail travel exclusives and try to pass it off on unsuspecting tourists in the name of exclusivity and value. Speaking of my experience, I circle back around to the Ambassador Bridge, which is one of two crossings between Detroit, Michigan and Windsor, Ontario, the other being the Detroit-Windsor Tunnel. There are duty-free shops on both sides of each crossing, but the one I prefer is the Tunnel Duty-Free Shop on the Canadian side. And as Kramer likes to say, I like to stop at the duty-free shop. Anyway, that's where I left Jerry today, at the duty-free shop. He seemed fascinated that everything in the store was duty-free. He kept asking and asking, and I kept telling him, yes, everything's duty-free. Everything in here is free of duty. He just couldn't believe it, so I let him stay there, and he could ask questions and check out products to his heart's content. It's also where I picked up today's bottle, Turis Mara from Jura. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correctly, because Turis Mara is Gaelic, for Long Journey, which seems appropriate considering that it's marketed towards international travelers. I picked it up for around $90. Per the box, this is finished in a mix of bourbon barrels, Bordeaux wine, and ruby port casks, resulting in an array of enticing flavors, honeyed vanilla, succulent black cherries, fleshy grape pulp, and juicy raisins. It also has this handy-dandy little flavor chart, which I'll show you here, which puts Turis Mara in the rich and intense category. Well, we'll see about that. It's bottled at 42% ABV. It is chill filtered and, as you can see from the back of the bottle, hopefully, mit Farbstoff, which, of course, is German for a whale's vagina. No, no, that's not right. It means with colorant. Yes, this, like every other Jura I've ever come across, has plenty of colorant added to it. So let's get to the nosing and the tasting and see what this travel retail exclusive bottling has to offer. Well, the nose opens with fresh apples and pears, very clearly defined, with 
a cinnamon stick thrown in there. Musty, kind of a musty charred oak kind of a thing going on. And even though the packaging states that it doesn't have any peat in it, well, it doesn't say that it doesn't have peat in it, it says that it's not in the peated category, I am detecting a very light trace amount of peat. But there's also something else, like hickory. Hickory in addition to the oak. More fruits, like... Uh, tangerines, and grapes. Strawberries and light port wine notes. Vanilla cream, very nice. Caramel and honey. With a little bit of brown sugar. It's kind of sweet, confectionery, but not over-the-top sweet. Some malty, buttery biscuits. Malted barley sugar. Slightly nutty. But nutty like peanuts. And a bit of a bourbon feel to it. Plums and some mint. Mint chocolate. That's what it is. Some, uh, some red wine notes. A lot of what they're describing here is what I'm getting, which is not often the case. Usually you find that they're just making stuff up to sell things, but in this case I'm getting a lot of what they're, they're describing. It's not a bad nosing whiskey at all. It's a little light though, and inoffensive. Inoffensive never a bad thing, but it's just a little bit too light for my personal tastes. But it is good. Let's go in for a tasting, shall we? Wow. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. The palate, it hits you like a ton of bricks compared to the nose. The nose was so light, unassuming, but the palate, it's quite spicy. Not, uh, not to say that it's peppery spicy, but it has a lot of spices in it. Um, more of that musty oak like I got with the nose. And, hang on. Yeah. Just the barest hint of peat. I don't know if there's peat in this whiskey, but... It tastes like maybe just a little bit. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> dry. It's very dry. Dry red wine and red grapes. And maraschino cherries. Just a little bit in the background. Letting it sit a bit. I'm getting some dry roasted peanuts. <clears throat> Typical that I find in um, Jim Beam. I didn't know what it was at first when I was tasting Jim Beam, but after I figured it out, all I could taste was peanuts. <laughs> I don't know if you're a Jim Beam fan, but next time you try it, just think peanuts, and you're probably going to get it. And that's all I get these days from Jim Beam. But I digress. Let's go back. Try a little more. Creme brulee and brown sugar with some cinnamon and nutmeg on top. Not bad. I do, uh, I do enjoy those particular flavors, but I think it's just too spicy again. again. Not like it's peppery spicy, like it's hot, but it's just overly spiced. It's, it's a bit harsh. Now I'm getting a little vanilla and some plums. Mixed berries and some apples and pears. It's um, it's a decent whiskey. 
but not what I would consider worth the money, and not what I would consider a repeat buy. As far as the score goes, I'll have to give Turis Mara from Jura 127 out of 195 passports. So the question of the day is, is this a dapper dram? No, not this time. The nose, while pleasant enough, is just too light, not interesting enough to hold my attention for very long. And the palate, well, it's just overly spiced and, I don't know, kind of harsh from time to time. So, not exactly what I would call dapper. If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving us a like and hitting the subscribe button. Also, what I forgot to mention in the past, is make sure you hit that little bell icon so that you will always be notified when a new video is released. You don't want to go missing our videos, do you? And if you would please check me out on distiller.com where you can read this and all of my reviews. Just search for the username generously underscore Paul. Oh, hang on, guys. Jerry's giving me a call. Hey, Jerry. Did you find anything you like? What? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Border Patrol officers? Jerry, what did you do? No. I said everything was duty-free. D-U-T-Y. Not duty. Never mind. Listen, Jerry, you have the right to remain silent. I suggest you exercise that right. Look, I'll be by in a little bit to pick you up. Okay. Don't say anything. Okay, bye. Well, it appears that Jerry has been going around to all the bathrooms in the duty-free shop, trying to inspect them to make sure they are, in fact, duty-free. <sighs> now i got to go bail him out. I swear, if this causes an international incident, I'm going <clears> to... <throat> Listen, thanks for stopping by. So long from Dapper Drams. We'll see you next time. I gotta go.